Hi, this is Danny from the Whiteboard Blog, and here is a quick tutorial to show you how to make an anagram game as a lesson starter um, using Promethean Active Inspire software. So, what I'm going to do to start off with is to put my word on the screen that I want to be the, the actual answer. So, this is the word that the, the students have to guess. Um, I've already made that a large size font, a 48 size font. Uh, what I'm then going to do is I need to convert that into an anagram. So, I'm going to switch to um, the internet, go over to a website I like to use, which is uh, an anagram generator. It's www.wordsmith.org forward slash anagram. And I'm going to type in here the word I wish to uh, create an anagram from. Hit get anagrams. And it will produce a whole list of anagrams here. Pick one that's, that's not too rude. Um, let's have a uh, big, uh, big lion again. So click on that. And copy that. And then back here with the text tool again, I'm going to click here to type in my text and I'm going to paste in that word. And if that's coming at the wrong size, I'm just going to create that to make it slightly bigger using the font tool again. So once I've, I've got my words, what I need to do now is position those on the screen and I'm going to hide those under some shapes and I'm then going to drag the shape off to reveal the word. So from the toolbar again here, I'm going to click on the shapes tool and from the toolbar that pops up down the sides, I'm going to choose a rounded rectangle. I'm going to choose red and red to fill it in with, with red on both sides. And I'm going to draw a box that's big enough to cover my word. What I'm going to do then is, having clicked on that, from the toolbar that pops up, I'm going to click on duplicate, which gives me another copy. I can drag that down there to um, hide my answer. What I could also do with now is, is a little bit of text that, that says answer in anagram. So I'm going to click on the text tool again. I'm going to type in um, anagram here. I'm going to click down here and type in answer. All I just need to do is to give myself a little bit of space so I can group both of those together. I'm going to click and drag a box to select both of them and I'm going to choose this little tool here which groups them for me. So now the whole thing is grouped. I'll do the same thing here. I'll group those, put them, uh, one on top of the other where I want them to be. Select, oops, let's move that down a little bit. Select them both. Try again with that suck. And I'm going to just click on the grouping tool again and put that there like that. Okay, so now I've got an answer here and I've got an anagram here. So what I want to do now is I want to have a, an object on the screen which I'm going to click to, um, to play a piece of music and that piece of music is 30 seconds long uh, and that'll be the time it takes for them to, to solve the anagram. So from the resource browser over on the side here I'm going to type in the word clock and down the side here will appear lots of things that all use the word clock, some of which might be actual proper stop clocks, which we could use. Um, I'll come back to that one later on. Uh, for this bit I'm going to use a, a clock that plays a piece of music, so I'm going to grab this clock here and I'm going to drag that onto the screen like so. Um, either from the, the menu button here or I can right click, I'm going to choose insert link to file and then browse to the mp3 file that I've got, which this one here is called countdown, and I'm going to open that file I'm going to choose that I want to um, store the file in the flip chart, which means that there'll be a copy inside this flip chart, which will always have the sound file. Um, I want to see the controller, and I'm going to say OK. But with that's done, if I put my mouse over the clock, I'll see I get a little white um, triangle blue blue icon here that lets me play it. Click on that, and it plays the music. And then I can, from the controller, stop it if, if people get the, the word early. Alternatively, if you click in the resource gallery and search for timer, um, there are different countdown timers you can use. Um, so if I pull one of these out onto the screen, uh, from this you can set number of seconds or number of minutes, and you can start the countdown timer. So you can give students a minute to solve the game or, or longer.
Okay, and there's a number of different ones of those in the gallery should you wish to use them. So what I have at the moment then is Nanogram game ready set up with uh, a question that's hidden and an anagram that's hidden all on the same page. Um, what I could then do is from my page sorter is click on the little icon that gives me the menus again and I could um, duplicate. Uh, duplicate the slide like that and then I can duplicate and so on to give myself a number of these screens. Then I can go to slide 2, I can double click on the word boiling and I can change that to a different word, make my box slightly bigger, and then obviously go to the anagram generator, choose an anagram for that, then go to the second, the third slide, the fourth slide, and so on. If I want to use this slide a lot, um, I could also take one of these slides, right click on it, and add it to resource library as a page. Um, that will put a copy into my resource library, into my personal bit of the resource library. So there's always going to be a anagram game there should I wish to use it. So that's it. Basically a very simple anagram game which you can produce uh, quite quickly. And obviously once you've made the screen the first time, you haven't got to make it from scratch every single time. You just pull it from the gallery or from a ready-made file. Uh, I hope you found it useful. Uh, please check the whiteboard blog for more tutorials coming soon. And um, thank you for listening.